I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV. Ah, it's one of our favorite bands. 2010 released by Interpol, called aptly titled Interpol. <laughs> um, and and just to jump into this one because Tom and I, I mean, I fell in love with Interpol's first album right before Antics came out. Um, Turn on the bright lights. One of my favorite albums of all time. Always in my top 15 on my list that I make. Tom, I know you love that mm -hmm. album now. I mean, I feel like that that was a real accomplishment for me when I got you into that album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, but, but I, you know, I kind of watched the slow decline of, of Interpol, which is sad to say because this is their fourth album. They came out with Antics in like 2005, 2004, um, and, then, and then Our Love to Admire in 2007, Seven. and then this in 2010. And, and, and each album just hasn't been up to par with Turn on the Bright Lights. That, that was just one of those masterful first albums, that, that freshman effort that's just so wonderful, and then they've had subsequent sophomore, uh, junior, and senior slumps. <laughs> and, and when you're comparing it to Turn on the Bright Lights, it's going to be like that. Yeah. Um, and and so, but this this album, a lot of fans like this. Um, there's more bass on this album, which has been a big criticism of mine in anything since Turn on the Bright Lights. I know Tom appreciates that. Oh yeah. Um, Turn on the Bright Lights is one of the best bass albums you'll ever listen oh, to. It's really good. Um, one of one of one thing I really noticed on this that I like is they're kind of doing this nosedive into a moodier feel of the album. The albums aren't focusing on songwriting and actually having structures. They're more just these mood bombs, and um, and it, it reminded me a lot of what um, how do you say his name, Tom Matt Beringer? Matt Beringer. Matt Beringer. Beringer, the lead singer of of, of the, the National. National and their new album um, High Violet, which came out in 2010, which we both liked a lot. Um, it, it seems like that's what they were kind of trying to pull off. To me, though, I feel like a lot of these songs are really repetitive and they drag on. Um, and they, and and really, when it comes down to it, they could have pulled off the Moody album like like the National did. But it's just that Paul Banks, the lead singer, doesn't sell it. It sounds a little forced at times to me. It sounds like you know he had a solo album come out in in, in two thousand and nine, and it sounds like he just kind of took that being the lead role guy and he's taken it a little too far. And it just seems. Forced, he doesn't he doesn't make it sound real and authentic, and, and it bothers me at times. I also think that this album is really top heavy, Tom. I don't know what you think. It generally, yeah, there are a few tracks near the end that I like. See, but. see, I have a problem. I feel like tracks seven through ten really just take the moodiness to an even new level. And and one of my biggest criticisms is track nine, all of the ways, could have been. It's really intense, and it could have been this like super. Awesome Interpol just they could have capitalized on all this mood building and intensity that they were that they had been just conjuring out of their Interpol New York City moodiness um, But but they never do it just kind of goes on and then just ends and it just it just feels kind of lame It's it, it they're kind of blue balls in me there, you know, and, and it hurts I don't like it and and that was my biggest criticism of the album is that I just tend to favor the first half I don't like top heavy albums. Um, it pisses me off and this album kind of pissed me off and I'm gonna dock it for it even though they're one of my favorite bands. I'm a little disappointed. I, in general I agree with a lot of what you had to say. Um, a few things that I want to pick out of there to emphasize. Uh, first off instrumentality why uh, as far as the instrumentals go uh, it's nice to see the guitar once again take a back seat to the drums and bass. Mm -hmm. This rhythm section is phenomenal. I think this is probably their their, their drummer's best album. Um, uh, I also I think they have a new drummer. Maybe just keep going. Um, I, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, their their bass player quit after oh, yeah, that's, after that's they recorded this album, but he he is on this album. But but the bass really comes back. So as far as the instrumental setup. And the mood, it's more like Turn On The Bright Lights than Antics or Our Love To Admire. Absolutely. But the problem is, just blatantly, songwriting is not as good. It, and right Paul Banks just isn't as believable. Um, it, it's, <coughs> I, I don't, like you said, he's forcing it just a little bit. Um, so unfortunately, the songwriting and the vocals... And even the lyrics just, at times. Yeah, they just don't stand up to it. But it's nice to hear the drums and the bass come back to the forefront because Absolutely. I have been missing that for their past two albums. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, and it really just comes down to the songwriting. Mm -hmm. I feel like they set out to do a mood bomb and they just didn't quite pull it off. And so it's just kind of just this snowball effect of just mm -hmm. things going awry. And 
But I still love this band. I'm still, I still believe they have it in them to really come out and do something cool. I do think this is a step in a good direction, and I like it. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm ready to see what's next. I'm mm -hmm. ready for the next Interpol album. They need to, they need to become like the Mars Volta and put one out every 18 months. Yeah. I would like that. Yeah. My favorite uh, tracks, Tom. I love the first two tracks, "Success" and "Memory." Memory serves, and then track four, "Lights." They're a band kind of themed on light and red, um, which is why we chose the red shirts. But but those are my favorite tracks. I'm going to go also with the first two tracks, of Sesame and Reserves, and then I'm going to pick track seven, Safe Without. Yeah. Um, overall, I think that this is, this like I said, good direction. Some big things holding this back. Typical of something in this range for me. I'm going to give it a 67. I'm going to give it a 73. I think, I think this is good. It's enjoyable. It took a while to get into. You guys out there, give it a few chances. Good call um, time. I, I think it'll plateau for you after a while, but it's still enjoyable. Yeah, still definitely, enjoyable. Yeah, definitely took me a few times to get into it. Mm -hmm. So give this you know, two to three before you really give up on it. Because um, before that, I, I really didn't like it even at 67. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, good call. Uh, but, yeah, I think that kind of wraps it up. you have anything else you no. want to add? No. What do you guys think about this album? I mean, Interpol, big... Big band in indie rock, and, and they've gotten some national attention, you know, with our love to admire. I mean, tell us what you think, because this is a new direction. And first of all, have you heard Dirt on the Bright Lights? We got that episode reviewed down there. Check it out. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. We are VIMTV, moving music critique forward.